okay, now let's get to the real gun violence statistics. So what we've been hearing is gun violence is constantly on the increase. People are, are being murdered on a, on a scale that boggles the imagination. School shootings are increasing. Uh, and your child is, is, if not likely going to die, has a high likelihood of being shot at a, at a school. This is not true. Okay, gun deaths in the United States have been radically declining since 1993. According to the Centers for Disease Control, there were seven gun-related homicides for every 100,000 Americans in 1993. By 2013, that number had been sliced in half to 3.6 homicides per 100,000 population. During that same period, the number of privately owned firearms in the United States doubled from 185 million to 357 million privately owned firearms in the United States. So the number of arms in the United States was going like this, and the amount of gun crime in the United States was going like that. And yet everybody in the media seems to assume that more guns means more crime. You're going to have to explain then why more guns does not mean more crime. Okay, where do all of these... Uh, also, quick note, they say there are 33,000 gun-related deaths in the United States. They neglect to mention that two-thirds of these are suicide. About 8,000, 9,000 gun-related homicides in the United States. The vast majority of gun-related deaths are people who are killing themselves. And it is very easy to substitute another method for killing yourself. Okay. Where do gun-involved deaths take place? So the idea from the left is that states that have lax gun laws have higher rates of gun crime. This is not true. Gun-involved deaths take place in mostly America's major cities. So all those hicks from the sticks, you know, the people who actually own all the guns, those aren't the, those aren't the people who are killing each other. Okay, this is all happening in cities, in major American cities. Virtually all of these major American cities are governed by one party, and I will let you guess which party that is. <laughs> Almost 60% of all American ho firearm homicides occur in the 62 cities of the country's largest metros. In order of gun, of gun homicide, gun-related death, New Orleans, Detroit, Las Vegas, Miami, Baltimore, St. Louis, Richmond, Memphis, Cleveland, and Philadelphia. That is nine Democrat mayors and one Republican mayor, the only Republican being in Miami. The single strongest predictor of rates of gun death by a wide margin is actually race, unfortunately. Okay, Richard Florida writes, the share of the population that is black is positively related to both the overall rate of gun death and even more so with gun-related homicides. Now, let it be noted, I am not suggesting that black people are inherently more likely to kill each other because that's stupid and racist. What I am suggesting is that culture has a high likelihood of causing homicide. And culture differs, okay? You can look in poor white communities. There's a higher rate of homicide there as well. Cultural issues in poverty in major American cities factor into gun death. Guns are not the chief reason for gun death, in other words. You need bad people picking up guns in order for those guns to fire themselves. I have two guns at home. I have a 9mm and I have a shotgun. Neither one of them has killed anyone. Neither one of them has popped out of my safe and shot anyone. And neither one of them is going to, because it's my safe and I have the key. Okay, rifles versus handguns. People keep talking about banning rifles. The left is very focused on banning rifles, which is a really weird thing to do when you think about it, considering that rifles are not more dangerous than handguns. In 2014, there were 8,100 total firearm homicides. Fully 5,500 were committed with a handgun. 248 total were committed with a rifle. Okay, so you're significantly, significantly more likely to die in, if you're in a gun-related incident from a handgun gunshot than you are from a rifle gunshot. And you're more likely to die from a blunt object from, from being hit with a fist than you are to be killed by a rifle. 660 people that year were killed with hands or fists, or feet, like Bruce Lee, right? <laughs> How about the idea that rifles are inherently more dangerous? Of course rifles have a greater muzzle velocity. Of course that's true, that's what rifles are made for, but that is not what is predominantly used in crime. And as for school shootings, the idea that school shootings are on the rise is also not true. There was a study that came out just in the last couple of days showing that the number of school shootings has actually been insignificant decline. Since 2012, according to the Gun Violence Archive, 138 people have been killed in school shootings. That does include the Parkland Massacre, and it includes any incident that took place on a school campus during times where students or faculty were on the ground. So somebody shot themselves. It wasn't even a mass shooting. Right, it's 138 people total. So between 15 and 20 people per year are killed on school grounds, which means that 2.6 percent of all youth homicides occur at school. Your child is about 40 times more likely to die from getting into your medicine cabinet or into some other household product than they are from being shot after you drop them off at school, as Leon Wolf points out over at The Blaze. And according to researchers at Northeastern University, mass school shootings are extremely rare. Four times as many children were killed in schools in the early 1990s as they are today. None of this is to make light of anything that's happened. 
None of this is to suggest that, not, that every school shooting is not a tragedy, but it is to suggest that the lie that is being promulgated out there, that there's a school shooting every day in America, you heard this, there were 18 school shootings, 18 mass shootings uh, in the first month of, of the new year, it's just not true, it's just a lie. It's made up, every town for gun violence, for, for gun safety uh, puts this stuff out and it's not true, it's statistically false. Mass shootings more broadly are also not happening all that often in the United States. In fact, on a per capita basis, the United States does not rank number one in deaths from mass shooting in the Western world. Okay, actually, the United States ranks 11th. From 2009 to 2015, here are countries that ranked above the United States in mass shooting deaths rates per million. Norway, Serbia, and France. Mass shooting frequency, we rank number 12, after Austria, France, Switzerland, and Norway. Switzerland and Norway. And here's the thing about using mass shootings as a proxy for this discussion anyway. Mass shootings are a really bad way to go about having a gun control discussion because they are not representative of gun violence in totality. The victims tend to be younger. The victims tend to be more racially diverse. The perpetrators tend to be a little bit younger. Most gun murder victims are between the ages of 15 to 34, for example. Two-thirds of those gun victims are black in the United States. Okay, in mass shootings, it's racially diverse. So why are we using mass shootings as a proxy to have a discussion about broader gun violence? It doesn't make any sense, except that the media like to choose hotspot, really ugly incidents they can focus on, so that then they can claim that all of us don't have sympathy for people who were killed. Yeah.